Among numerous other benefits, deploying a dual band network gives you the ability to provide users of 5 GHz capable devices such as smartphones, tablets, and laptops with connectivity on the high bandwidth 5 GHz band for applications such as video streaming and large file transfers, while freeing up the more crowded 2.4 GHz network to support legacy devices. But how do you get those devices to use 5 GHz so that they're not bogging down the 2.4 GHz band? Hi, I'm Daniel, field engineer for Ingenious Technologies. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about band steering and why you need it. Band steering encourages dual band client devices to connect on 5 GHz instead of 2.4. All dual band Ingenious access points support the option to enable band steering. Without band steering, the majority of devices would typically connect on the more congested 2.4 GHz band, leaving 5 GHz hardly used. Think of 2.4 GHz as a two-lane highway and 5 GHz as a four-lane highway. Because of the additional interference on 2.4 GHz, you can think of that two-lane highway as having construction on it as well. 2.4 GHz actually does have longer range than 5 GHz, but that is where the benefits of 2.4 GHz ends. 2.4 GHz has fewer available channels, channel bandwidths are narrower, there is much more interference on 2.4 GHz, making 5 GHz the band of choice. Here I am logged into an EAP-1200H. I'm at the wireless page, and here is where band steering, where you can enable it. So I'm going to go ahead and enable it here. It does require that you make the SSID and security settings the same for both bands. So I'll go ahead and do that now. I'm going to rename this. Let's get this Ingenious One. There we go. I'm also going to name it here, Ingenious One. I'm going to edit, and we don't want to leave the security disabled. We want to enable it. I'll use WPA2 pre shared key. I'll make it AES only. And I'll have the password I was from before I had it in here as trust no one. And I'll do the same for 5 gigahertz. I'll enable it. WPA2 pre-shared key, AES only, with the exact same passphrase. And I'll go ahead and save. Another thing we recommend doing is setting the output power to be lower on 2.4 compared to 5 gigahertz. So I'll do that now. Transmit power I'll set to 14 dBm on 2.4 gigahertz and 20 dBm on 5 GHz. This will make the coverage cell similar for both bands. Another thing we should look at is the channel bandwidth on 2.4 GHz. We don't want to leave the default setting set at 20, 40 MHz. We want to change it to 20 only. That will give us three non-overlapping channels, 1, 6, or 11. So we, we want to set them to either 1, 6, or 11 and not leave it on auto. For the 5 GHz band, Depending on how many access points there are and how you're setting things up, you may want to leave it on 80 MHz, 40, and usually you don't need to use 20. There's plenty of channels on the 5 GHz uh, frequency to work with, but you do want to set a specific channel as well. The changes don't take effect until you go to the final changes screen. We're applying all changes. Thank you for joining in Genius's Tech Talk. Be sure and check out our other videos. Thank you.